thinking should. <laughs> we are live with Rob Jacobs again from Short Sale Pathways. Hey, Rob. Hey, how you doing, Jen? Good. Now, we came on talking about short sales and foreclosures and what was going on right as the lockdown was hit. So I thought it would be good to get an update um, from you on kind of the current state. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot has happened. Obviously, it's been a little over a year. And, uh, you know, some of the main uh, key points are um, the, the foreclosure um, forbearance that and the moratorium for renters. So, the, you know, the first one that's coming up is the rental moratorium that ends right. at the end of July. Uh, it was supposed to end in June and uh, Biden bumped it a month. And um, the thing about that one is that we don't nobody really knows how many renters are, are not paying their, their rent right now because um, they don't really have a way to to gauge it and, and follow it like they do with the mortgages. But can you I know, ask you a question about that? Sure. So there were some states that didn't have the foreclosure moratorium, right? Well, no, it's a national uh, law. So it would be uh, the GSEs and uh, HUD. So- Oh, um, okay. It was some states didn't have the eviction moratorium. Oh, for the renters? Yeah. Well, national law, state law can't buy over, pat, over uh, go over the, the national law. Okay. But there's, you know, there's a lot of caveats in that, you know, if it's vacant, they or I mean, if the renters have moved out, they can do it. Okay. Um, so you know, the, there's a lot of ways that the people can can kind of skirt the law that's there, um, and that's still legal and and evict people. But um, if it's you know a single family home where the people are just there can't pay their rent, those people have to stay until you know July 31st. Accepted. Yeah. But then that could affect because if they're not paying their rent, and let's say, um, let's say the owner can't then pay the mortgage because they're not getting the rent, that's right. like where we're seeing which the could problem be part, as related to this. Yeah, which could be a, lot, a big part of the numbers, you know, or at least a right. significant portion of it, you know, for the the um, forbearance, which is still two million houses. Um, Two million mortgages that are um, extremely past due. Would but how does that compare to say, okay, so if two million mortgages are past due, how does Actually, that compare to like 2010? Um, the the numbers um, are roughly about the same. I think it was 1.7 million in 2010. Really? So um, yeah, and, and actually, what we have is there's about two is 1.85 million that are extremely behind, probably from the beginning, so 15 months, say. And then there's another million that are between 30 and 90 days behind. So okay. there's almost 3 million late mortgages right now. But that also means that they're not negotiating, like, because I don't, I don't know if people know this, but like, obviously, you've had over 15 years of processing short sales. Um, and I used to um, do some short sales also. So like before you go to foreclosure, there's opportunities to negotiate with the bank yeah, to not money. foreclose, right? Which is the short sale. There's a couple options. Yep. But with the ones that are behind, they have not even looked at any of those options, right? Because of the ban? Uh, well, they're starting to now. And okay. it's not intense and in depth. It will be after September 30th because everybody will have to go through that. So right now what they're doing is they're contacting the uh, people that are late, not paying, and asking them if COVID is still affecting their ability to repay. Okay. If they say yes, then they're extended. Uh, if they say no, um, I think I can redo it. They'll put them into a loss mitigation and see if they can rearrange their payments, whether it's uh, restructuring their, their uh you know, monthly payment amount or um, putting, you know, the amount at the end of the loan, which is, which is essentially FHA ha has already had that for a long time. And it's basically a second mortgage, but it's still through your, you know, main mortgage. They just and, extend the time and make yeah. the payments like kind of more yeah, affordable okay. based on your financials. Yeah. It'd be a balloon payment at the end of the term, you know, when your mortgage is up and, you know, and then your more normal mortgage rate would start up whenever, you know, August or whatever. So let's say the person is like, no, COVID isn't affecting me, but like, I can't, like, for whatever reason, they're like, I can't afford this house or whatever. They're probably not 
going to extend it depending on the person on the phone that they're talking to. So, you know, because it's supposed to be 100% COVID related. Now, if you're, if you're not paying your mortgage and it has nothing to do with COVID, chances are they're just going to uh, put you into the loss mitigation immediately and, and try that's to- that's where uh, a short sale could come into, yeah. right? Yep. So yep. can you explain how, cause you're, um, if people don't know, we did like a three-part series on explaining like short sales, foreclosures, how it works, how your company short sale pathways works with other agents because you're actually a licensed agent which is awesome you yeah, i'm a broker our plight yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're so if but you work with agents yep. all across the nation so if they have a client and i would recommend and i'm sure you would too just from having done the process if you're a real estate agent where you have a client that's underwater which seems almost impossible now but once they've added like fees yep. and stuff that's <laughs> very real right well, yeah, well, you know, when people, when it comes down to it, they're going to be 18 months behind. And if their mortgage was 2000 a month, they're yeah. now um, $36,000 behind on yeah. their mortgage. If they bought their house one to five years ago, they pro still owe almost what they paid for the oh, house. Yeah. And, and, you know, and not only that, but, um, you know, so they owe that, then they don't have the money to get caught up. And what I'm worried about too, is the people that are buying houses right now are taking their life savings and putting mm -hmm. it into the purchase of the house in appraisal guarantees, right. you know, there's a, you know, nine months of that that's went on across the country. So, you know, how many uh, savings have, has that wiped out? Right. And when the market goes down, those houses are not going to be nowhere near what they paid for them because yeah. they, they were already weren't what, worth what they paid, you know? Yeah, they, right. They, well, yeah, that's a problem for like in a year or so, right? So like, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, me. We'll see what happens. You know, the economy is not uh, funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but for now, okay. So if they're but, if they're underwater, like we are, we're at our listing um, appointment, or we've done a lot of research, and it seems like they're underwater. Then the first thing that they would do would be to contact you, right? So how do they work yeah. with you in order to help their client? Well, uh, we work together as a team, it, you know, with me, the agent and the seller, um, the agent can, uh, you know, present me as a team member mm -hmm. and I'm a specialist and, um, we all work together on getting the initial documents. Once I get everything together, that's needed, that is required by the bank. I'll send it in, do all the negotiating, the phone calls, the follow-ups, you know, additional documents that are needed. And, it's really time consuming, you know, yeah. as you know, you've done them. And uh, so, you know, it can take, you know, the average is about 50 to 60 hours of your time. And yeah. that's me as a as someone who does this every day, right? As somebody who doesn't know, do it oh every day God. or doesn't know how to do it, then, yeah. you know, you're looking at, you know, months and months and months and months, of, you know, because the banks will cancel the short sale in a heartbeat if they don't like the way your documents look, you know, right. they'll, they'll tell you they need this redone. And if you don't get that in, you know, in 72 hours or whatever their end time is that they require it, it's canceled. Then you start over. And that yeah, they're just... really picky and it, a lot of it doesn't make sense. But I think like the primary thing is like, as an agent, I would want to know like one, how can I maintain the relationship with my client and bring you in as a specialist and how do you get paid? Yeah. Yeah. And just presenting me as a team member and, and a, a specialist is usually sufficient, uh, you know, and because we keep know, listing as the agent, it's not like even oh yeah. you don't get it or anything like that yet. And yeah, yeah, and I, yeah. And I, I just put my fee on the uh, the HUD or the CD okay. as a settlement fee, and okay. uh, I get paid uh, that way. And um, you know, I get paid eighty percent of the time. And uh, when they do cut my fees, it's usually, you know, five six hundred dollars, and typically the buyer will pay that. Okay. Sometimes a seller will, you know, but it's not, you know, not that big of a deal, you know. So um, you, banks you think majority. that like um, when all this is lifted and like, do you, what do you think is going to happen? You think it's going to well, be a lot more short sales? Like, before? yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, another another issue too that we're, that I'm seeing is that there are so many new agents out there right now that don't even really know what a short sale is, mm -hmm. and they have, they're not prepared for it. You know, um, the last crash, I mean, it, it was kind of fading away eight years ago. Yeah. And there's a lot of new people out there who are veterans now that don't know how to do a short sale. 
So that's something else that I can help them with, with coaching teams, individuals, and getting them up to speed on it. Cause it's very important to know how to do that. So right. when this comes to an end, you know, the first thing will be the end of July with the rental uh, situation. And mm-hmm. we'll see, we'll start to see the numbers in you know, mid to late August on that. And then once September hits, if they don't, if the government doesn't kick down the can down the road anymore, we're definitely going to see foreclosures, short sales. And there's actually a, uh, a big event um, held by DS News on the 27th. There's a webinar where they will be discussing um, how the banks and the asset managers and servicers are going to be addressing it. Okay. What I'm finding right now is the people in loss mitigation have no clue. And they definitely have to up their game if they are going to. Well, keep I would up. say those whole departments have been shut down for over a year. Yeah, yeah, and they were supposed to be uh, ramping them up and getting them ready, but not they haven't yet. You know, I think you know they're, it's about money, right? They're waiting until the very last minute. So um, you know, hopefully they they do have the staffing and that what they're. I've seen parts of their plans. They're going to start moving people from originations into that. Um, you know, the, the economy is already uh, struggling. And that's another thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, we, the, C, the uh, CPI index numbers just came out and it's double what the government, um, you know, was uh, uh, projecting. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that's not a good thing. And uh, that, that flyer that I sent you, yeah, I mean, one of the, the crazy numbers. The screen so you, they can see it. Yeah, there we go. So, I mean, uh, like, you know, used cars, for, what's that, 45%? Um, uh, used cars, yeah, 45.2. Yeah, so there's some insane numbers that, that are on that. Um, and that, that just came out on Monday. That car and, rental up 87%. I felt that. that the car, renting a car is hard, but I think it's because they sold all their cars. They sold yeah, all their cars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, there's so many issues right now with, uh, you know, uh, the unemployment issue and, um, you know, people that are not working that probably should be, they're collecting unemployment. Well, mm-hmm. you know, there, there's um, computer chips are in, in high demand and hard to get. So, you know, my refrigerator went out. I can't get a new refrigerator for almost a month because of the chip shortage. Um, and that's affecting everything because everything's, you know, chips in everything nowadays. You well, know? everybody's feeling that we ordered yeah. some windows for a property and they're like, uh, what do they tell me? At least, yeah, at least 12 weeks, at least. Yep. And what's happening is, is, you know, it's causing inflation to, to go really high, really fast. Right. And you know how it is once companies start raising their prices. They don't come down. They don't usually come down, you know, because the consumers find them acceptable enough to keep purchasing. Well, there you go. All the prices have went up. Inflation just keeps going. Right. And then it, then we get runaway inflation and then everything collapses, you know, um, not to say well, that'll happen, but to that. yeah, I yeah. mean, we, we generally figure out a way to get it evened out. It's, you know, it's all cyclical. We can, right? we can, we can hope. <laughs> I, yeah. you know, I, I see a lot of what, what, what's happening in, you know, the economy and from the government and wall street and, you know, there, there's a lot of red flags going out there. Um, a big one, another a new one, too, that you probably haven't heard. Wells Fargo um, Friday announced that they're no longer um, offering um, lines of credit to their Uh-oh. customers. And that's huge. Yeah. That's the first thing to go when there's a crash. <laughs> right. yeah, the last crash, uh, lines of credit was the first thing immediately. Wells Fargo is a huge bank. If they're doing that, it's why are they doing that if, right. if everything's all fine, you know? Right. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard. But for, I mean, we've just scratched the surface on like what can potentially happen like in the real estate market and how I just want to reiterate for agents, if you find yourself sitting with a customer who it seems as though they are underwater, meaning that they can't, you, it doesn't look like the market, they'll get what they need for the house in order to settle the debt with the bank like to call you immediately and talk to you about it and kind of yeah. follow that route. So what is the best way to get a hold of you if people have questions or if they, they are interested in maybe even making this like interested in the coaching that you have? Sure. Um, well, my, my company is short sale pathways. So Rob at short sale pathways.com. Um, my, my uh, toll free number 888-416-4526. Um, call me anytime. Um, more than happy to, you know, help you out. Anybody Are there any states advice? that you don't do? 
Uh, no, I mean, I work in all the states, but some states, um, you know, uh, like California, a lot of them out west uh, have no recourse on foreclosures. So typically the people just let it go because it's got it. not much incentive to do the short sale. So. Whereas like in some other states like um, Ohio or whatever, like they they'll they'll go come after you and you know the bank will come after you for the difference yeah 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 Yeah. so i guess it depends which is why they need to call you and so you can like help figure that out for them yeah and you know you don't see a whole lot of people where the banks come after them but you know 30 percent of the mortgages are private uh those are probably uh, most likely to uh for people to be sued and uh you know here in michigan it's seven years they can come after them and then they can file a court notice for 10 years It's a long time. Yeah, it's a long time. You know, you might, you know, it stink, you know, and they would be the professionals, you know, lawyers, doctors, you know, that were affected, that they lost a lot of their assets, lost their job, who knows, and then their careers got back on track. Well, in five right. years, you may get a letter saying, hey, you owe us 40 grand, 50 grand. Right. And, right. You know, um, nobody wants that. <laughs> but, no, definitely um, not. Yeah, I, I have an extremely high success rate. Um, I, I'm very good at this. So, I mean, I, I haven't lost a deal in over five years. That's good. And, yeah, so, I mean, I'm- you What's know, the done, longest one's ever taken you to complete? Uh, I just closed I just closed it about six months ago. It was two years and four months. <laughs> Mine yeah. was a year and a half. It was, and oh my gosh. And it was yeah. a terrible little, tiny little worst house and like the worst neighborhood (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. like cost me money to to do it but I really appreciate you being on I mean I know we just scratched the surface but thanks for coming um coming back and we'll probably we'll do an update again for people yeah you know and uh you know as news comes out and things start happening you know uh, more than happy to come back and love chatting with you perfect thanks Rob all right talk to you later then